Hey everybody, welcome back to reading our psalm. We are today reading chapters 32 through 34, and this is what chapter 34, 30, 32, we're just going to leave that in. What 32 starts with, oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Therefore, let all the godly pray to you while there is still time, that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey him. Shout for joy, all you whose hearts are pure. Chapter 33. Let the godly sing for joy to the Lord. It is fitting for the pure to praise him. Praise the Lord with melodies on the lyre. Make music for him on the ten-stringed harp. Sing a new song of praise to him. Play skillfully on the harp and sing with joy. For the word of the Lord holds true and we can trust everything he does. He loves whatever is just and good. The unfailing love of the Lord fills the earth. The Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. He breathed the word and all the stars were born. He assigned the sea its boundaries and locked the oceans in vast reservoirs. Let the whole world fear the Lord and let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. The Lord frustrates the plans of the nations and thwarts all their schemes. But the Lord's plans stand firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. What joy for the nation whose God is the Lord, whose people he has chosen as his inheritance. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. From his throne, he observes all who live on the earth. He made their hearts, so he understands everything they do. The best equipped army cannot save a king, nor is great strength enough to save a warrior. Don't count on your war horse to give you victory. For all its strength, it cannot save you. But the Lord watches over those who fear him, those who rely on his unfailing love. He rescues them from death and keeps them alive in times of famine. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone. Chapter 34. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you to fear the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. He will erase their memory from the earth. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. 
The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous, not one of them is broken. Calamity will surely overtake the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve him. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Oh, there's so many things in that. I hope that you're like underlining again, highlighting, trying to, you know, what is the Lord speaking to you? Because there's multiple things that, that the Lord wants to share with you as you're reading these. I've read the Psalms many times and every single time something different stands out to me. And the interesting thing is I actually underlined a couple things that I wanted to mention to you. But then when I started reading, I really felt like the Lord was like, no, this is, this is something you need to actually press in, uh, today. Uh, and, and, and what I had underlined was even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will act no good thing. I think that for some reason really stood out to me earlier, but as I started reading this, somebody listening today needs to hear this. Psalm chapter 32 really hit me. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes. What joy for those who, whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, but listen, when I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long, day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in a summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I think this is so important. And for some of you listening, you know, it's uh, the Bible talks about uh, one day it says nothing will be uh, hidden. And it says those things that have been done in dark will be brought to light. And there's something that happens when the Bible says, now confess your sins, confess your sins to one another. And confession doesn't mean saying, I'm sorry. That doesn't make sense. If we were to call somebody in, you know, and a, a judge would say, I need you to confess, you know, what did you do? And you're like, I'm sorry. He's like, okay, but what did you do? He's like, I'm sorry. And like that doesn't, that's not true repentance, right? The reason confession is important because when you speak something out about what you've done, the Lord doesn't want to actually identify you by that. He wants to be able to remove that guilt from your life. He wants to be able to throw that away and say that's, but that's not what identifies you, right? You might've done that, but that's not what identifies you. I identify you. And in this, you start being identified by the sins that you hold on to because they start to consume you. And you can tell when people have a guilt conscience, they're living in this perpetual sickness and it starts to wear on their body. And they'll even tell you that, you know, 80% of sickness comes from stress and it comes from holding on to hurts and holding on to pains that you're not willing to confess. And sometimes the sin that you're not willing to confess to the Lord, you act like he doesn't already know. And the problem is he does already know he does see, and he knows what's making you sick. And so we have to be able to release this. And I love this because he's like, finally, I confess. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. And then he goes, and you forgave me. My guilt is gone. And it's funny because there's part of this where it's like my body is wasting away. I'm holding on to this stuff. And I'm telling you right now, confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. It's time to get the stuff that's been in the dark into the light. And it's amazing because once he does that, he starts talking about the goodness of God and he talks, rejoice in the Lord and be glad all you who obey him, all whose hearts are pure. Well, his heart wasn't pure, but now it is. And he's revealing like all it took was getting this outside, getting it into the light and letting the light deal with it. Right? Because the light starts to deal with it and says, you might've done that action, but that is not what defines you. And I'm going to remove that from your life. And as you confess this, it's interesting. He wrestles with it. And I'm telling you, there's something so freeing about confession, being able to tell the Lord and say like, Hey, I know I've done this, but that is not who I want to be. That is not what I want to do. And I love it that David constantly returns to the Lord. You'll find it in other places in scripture where he's like, Hey, I might not even see it. So God examine my heart. Let me know. Is there any wicked way in me? But the things that I do know are things that I need to confess to you. So I want to encourage you as you continue to read this, there's so much that stands out. We would love for you to comment, tell us what kind of things stood out to you. So other people can be encouraged as they read through Psalm. If you like today's video, check out the Here Be Lions app for more resources.